great that 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 you took your time and uh, have a little bit of uh, time for us to chat here. Yeah, of that, course, my pleasure. Really amazing. Um, should we just start in then? Sure. Okay, let's go. Um, because you're obviously a busy man right now. So um, you've just transitioned to uh, to Raw as a commentator. And of course, um, you're now a playable character in WWE 2K23, a new DLC pack coming out. Um, a lot of uh, players out there have been anticipating you being in the game. But my question to you is, um, first off, are you a gamer yourself? And who will get your first virtual uh, bull hammer right now with you in the game? Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, I'm a bit of a gamer myself. I have a Nintendo Switch. I'm pretty light on the gaming these days. When I was younger, I used to have the Mega Drive or the Genesis, as some people like to call it. I had a Game Boy. I had a SNES. I had a Commodore 64, which the oh, kids awesome. wouldn't have heard of, but that's yeah, of on uh, the, old, the old cassettes. But yeah, I've kind of tapered it off a bit now. I only ever really play on the the long flights that I have. So I have yeah. a small Nintendo Switch that I play Zelda on, a couple of other things. Um, but yeah, excited to be back on WWE 2K23, the highest rated game of the entire history of WWE games. And um, it's cool for me to be back in it for the first time since 2016. Do you know if Michael Cole is a playable character in this game? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think oh, so. That's a pity because he would have been my first choice to get a bull hammer. <laughs> But seeing as he's not in the game, I know he's doing commentary on it. I wasn't sure if he was a playable character. I think I'd have to choose Drew McIntyre as my victim for a bull hammer. He's a guy I've gone way back with. We kind of started out together on the independent scene in the UK. We got signed on the same day along with Seamus. Uh, but he's definitely my first victim. He would be the number one in the line. <laughs> awesome. Uh, the good good question regarding Michael Cole. I mean, uh, you just uh, moved over to Raw along uh, with Michael Cole. Um, how you've been working on NXT? You've been working on uh, SmackDown, and now it's Raw. Um, do the the uh, does the commentary uh, differ in any way? And what's your who's your favorite commentary partner? Okay, well, I've been pretty lucky in my time in WWE. As you mentioned, I've been back for three years now doing yeah. commentary. For the first two years in NXT, I worked with Vic Joseph, who is a superb commentator, and I'd look forward to doing some more work with him in the future at some point. He is vastly underrated. Um, but then in the past 12 months, I've been working with the greatest of all time, Michael Cole. So for me, I've been very lucky with my lack of experience. When I came in, I immediately got paired up with a very experienced quality commentator like Vic Joseph, but then being paired with Michael Cole, he has given me all the tips and advice uh, and ability to improve my game and get to be as good as I can be as a commentator. And he's also a great guy. I get along with Michael Cole and Vic very well, but um, it's, it's nice to get along well with your commentary partner, be able to socialize with them away from the show, because I think that helps build some great chemistry. And I think the, the chemistry I have with those two commentators has been excellent. <laughs> And you still want to give Michael Cole the bullhammer? I do. You know what? He um, <laughs> he's an irritant. He's a mild irritant. That's what I would call Michael <laughs> Cole. We, we're kind of like this on the show, yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah. Bar afterwards and have a bit of fun. But when the camera's on, he likes to push my buttons. I like to push his. We often seem to differ on opinions on certain superstars, especially like Dominic Mysterio or um, Roman Reigns. I'm a big fan of those two. Michael Cole, not so much. So we, we're certainly a little antagonistic at times. But uh, yeah, I'll go for a beer with him afterwards. But first and foremost, he gets a bull hammer. <laughs> um, when will be hearing? When will we be hearing you in a WWE 2K game? Oh, that's it. Well, you know, one step at a time. This is my first time back in the game since 2016. <laughs> I would love to do the commentary. I know um, Michael Cole, Corey Graves, and Byron Saxton are doing the commentary this year. Of course, it's every commentator's dream to be part of the video game. So maybe at some point in the future, we'll see. Okay. Um, how tough was it for you to move from an active wrestling uh, position to a commentating position? Because we all know that the wrestling bug still bites at times. Is it for you as well? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't getting any younger. That was part of it. Um, I think there's a natural process when it comes to being a, an athlete in any sport where, you know, there's a, a window you have to really maximize your time at your peak of your physical prowess. And I think that window was closing for me. I could physically get back in the ring now. 
I just don't think I want to do the 365 days a year as an active wrestler mm. like I used to do. Um, I think I've got opportunities to do something I really enjoy right now. I'm having more fun being a commentator than I ever did in the ring. There's very oh, different okay. kinds of pressures to each role. Um, but I think I perhaps have a, a more natural aptitude to being in the role of a commentator than that of being in the ring playing the big star. So um, I have no regrets. I don't secretly desire a return to the ring. That's not to say I will never get back in the ring. Maybe at some point I will. Um, I think my days as a full-time competitor, though, are are over now. Yeah. Too bad, because there were a lot of rumors about you. Ah, oh, Wade Barrett, maybe he's coming back, especially WrestleMania season or Rumble season. Everyone's like talking, talking. Hey, about I, I will never rule it out, put it that way. <laughs> If the right opportunity came along and let's say Michael Cole wanted to get back in the ring or Drew McIntyre needed a challenger in, in Wembley Stadium one day, then I think I'm the man for the job. But um, I'm certainly not angling or pushing for that at the moment with management. Okay, sounds good. Because the interesting is thing is, I, I, I looked up your, your Wikipedia and some of your, your dates uh, there. And... First of all, you're only two years younger than me, so uh, we're about the same age. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> so uh, I can definitely uh, see the C64 uh, there with me as well. Um, and uh, and I also looked up some of your old ring names. And your, one of your old ring names was um, Lawrence Knight. Yes. And so, so we got another knight right now in the WWE. And I thought, I mean, WWE 2K23, you can also build like new tag teams. How would a team with LA Knight and Loris Knight slash Wade Barrett look like? Yeah, I'm, I like to think to myself that LA Knight got his inspiration for his name <laughs> from Lawrence Knight. But to tell you the truth, Lawrence Knight was a probably a six-month character for me when I was in Florida <laughs> Championship Wrestling yeah. back in kind of 2008. Um, Lawrence Knight didn't win a single match. He <laughs> lost every week. Uh, briefly, I had a manager called Byron Saxton, who's the commentator you all know now, and he was the worst manager of all time. It's the only manager I've ever had in the world of wrestling. Either, yeah. I lost every single match, and at that point, I thought, I've got to do something about this Lawrence Knight guy. My, my career is going to crash if I carry on with him. So I killed Lawrence Knight and reinvented him as Wade Barrett, and, and Wade Barrett then went on a run of success and, and had a good time in WWE. So, yeah, I would love to, to tag up with LA Knight. I think I've been his number one cheerleader. The guy is on fire right now. The world has finally caught on. I just think he's he's going to be taking over the, the world of WWE, the world of sports entertainment, and um, it's about time too. That guy's been a hell of a talent for the last 10, 12 years. I've been aware of him for a long time. I've worked with him on and off for the past three or four years, and I'm thrilled to see a guy with such natural talent and natural charisma and ability uh, finally getting his due from the audience. Yeah, and you, you also mentioned uh, Drew McIntyre already here. There are a lot of British and European wrestlers right now on WWE roster, and they're having like a huge success and banger after banger, as, uh, as Seamus likes to say. Um, do you still pay attention to the European scene there? What's going on there? And uh, how do you see this, this whole thing developed over the years? Yeah, I think it's awesome. I'm, I remember when I was younger as a fan of WWE in my teens, or indeed when I initially got hired by WWE in the late 2000s and I came through, generally there used to be one, two, maybe three Europeans in the entire show. It was very much a show based around North America. You'd have a ton yeah. of the Americans and Canadians, a few Mexicans, and outside of that, maybe one Japanese guy, a couple of Europeans, maybe one African. Um, I think the world has got smaller thanks to technology, and I think WWE in that process has grown to be more and more of a global brand. And because of that, we need representatives of every country where we have fans. So I don't care if you're from Thailand, if you're from Vietnam, if you're from Cameroon, there's people watching WWE there. And in an ideal world, they will have representatives from their nation who they can pull for. Because I remember as a kid, my favorite was the British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith, yeah. who was a brilliant competitor. He was great to watch, but ultimately the reason I love that guy is because he was wearing the flag of my nation. He sounded yeah. like me and he was taking on the Americans. So that's why I pulled 
for him. So I think people like to see representatives from their nation and the fact that we've got all these different Europeans from across the continent now in the company and especially in NXT there's a few coming through there like Axiom is from Spain and um, Ilya Dragunov is from Russia so we've got more and more coming through and I think it's a great thing for the company and it's a great thing for the fans around the world who, who like to see their people. Yeah, of course. I mean, as, as a as a German as a German uh, speaking wrestling fan, I have to uh, talk about with you about uh, Imperium and uh, Gunther. Um, so, what's your opinion about him? I mean, he's he's a guy. I could see you guys in the in the in the ring, to be honest. So that's going to be a hard hitting match between you, right? Of all the people you want to put me in the ring with, you want to put me in there with the most <laughs> devastating, hard hitting guy. Give me give me the rubbish guy. Don't give me the dominant <laughs> guy. I want to win. <laughs> Gunther would destroy me. He would cave my chest in. But I'm I'm a huge fan of Gunther. Um, you're right. He's really hard hitting. He's had some superb matches with Drew, with Sheamus. I think one day we'll see him in the ring with the likes of Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. And I can't wait for that moment. Um, I think those are going to be huge matches. But this guy, Gunther, he really is the future of the industry right now. And he looks unstoppable. And I'll give a nod to um, Giovanni Vinci from Italy and Ludwig yeah. Kaiser, who's from Germany. Those yeah. two are superb. They're kind of playing a little backing role at the moment, but those two are massive stars in their own right. And I think when the time is right to pull the trigger on those two, they're both going to be huge individual stars too. Yeah. Uh, I'm a, I'm a wrestling fan from Germany as well. And so I've seen those three grow actually. And it's so amazing to see them on the big stage, to see them at SummerSlam, to see them at WrestleMania. So that's really awesome. I think that's also a part of what wrestling is about to see um, these talents evolve and, and really getting on, getting onto the big stage. And you mentioned NXT and you mentioned names like Ila Dragunov, Nation Fraser and, and stuff like that. Um, who are your, your, your top prospects there from the NXT brands? Well, I'll give you three that are a complete cheat because anybody who watches NXT will know that <laughs> Bron Breaker, Carmelo Hayes, and Tiffany Stratton are all going to be massive. Um, but I'll give you a guy who I think has everything and he's really stepped up a lot over the past 12 months. He came in, he's got a natural, superb look about him. He's got um, a ton of charisma. He's really confident on the microphone and he's a brilliant athlete too. And now he's started to gain a bit of experience um, he's going to be really special. That's a guy called Trick Williams. Mm -hmm. um, so he's been kind of Carmelo Hayes's 1B over the past year. They've recently split apart. And I think Trick Williams is now going to go on this run as a single star where he's going to start getting the credit he deserves. And I think over the next one or two years, he's going to be a big time player in NXT and then beyond to Raw and SmackDown. So very excited about Trick Williams. Yeah, he's a really, really charismatic guy, as you as you mentioned. But he's been also been in the shadow of uh, Carmella Hayes a bit there. But I could see him breaking out there as well as. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of Ilya Dragunov, of course. So uh, yeah, Ilya is amazing. I think um, <laughs> he's he's another one who's had for him to step into a ring with Gunther. They had a match a couple of years ago on NXT. It's one of the greatest matches you will ever see. Uh, but for him to match the power and intensity of a Gunther who is that much bigger than him blew everyone's mind. And that that was the moment Ilya Dragunov put himself on the global scene. Everyone in management, everyone in the WWE locker room is excited about that guy. And uh, we can't wait to get him up on Raw and SmackDown. So you're right. He's a he's a guaranteed surefire winner, that guy. Yeah, and final final question we call, say, trying to kick me out. Um, so um, who's going to be the one to dethrone Roman Reigns? Oh, that is, <laughs> that is the impossible question. In my opinion... Right now, there is not a human being on planet Earth who can defeat Roman Reigns in a singles match with the championship on the line. I've seen too many come and too many fail over the past three years. I don't see that changing anytime soon. The only way I see Roman Reigns losing that championship is if, and I don't want this to happen, if he decides to retire. I don't want that to happen. But I just cannot see anybody at the moment defeating Roman Reigns at all. Okay, that's a statement. And I thank you for your time. Any final bad news slash words for the uh, German wrestling base? No bad news whatsoever. Today is all about good news. Get the bad news you pack. That is out on August the 16th. Highest rated game in the history of WWE 2K. It's exciting. And I think the real reason the rating is so high is because bad news Barrett is back. <laughs> and I'm on the game. Boom. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Olaf. <laughs> Have a good one.
Headlock, der Pro Wrestling Podcast.